Hi, good morning everybody. It's so nice to see you all. So today I will be starting a new painting. One of my our <clears throat> group members said that she wants to learn how to paint roses. So that is why I have picked a new uh, topic which is roses. So to all of you who uh, don't know me uh, more, let me just give a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Swandita Bansal and I, by training, I used to be a data scientist. I have worked for companies like McKinsey, Barclays, uh, Fractal, TCS for over a period of 15 years. And I have been into art. Uh, I pursued, uh, started pursuing art almost 10 years, not not 10 years, I would say longer than that, uh, as a hobby. And <clears throat> four years ago, I decided to um, take it up as a serious profession. So here I am, and let's get started. I would also love to know about you, who you are, uh, where do you stay, so that I would know a little bit more about you. Okay, so I will just change the camera and we will get started. I have posted the image of uh, this uh, flower, which I have taken from Pixabay <coughs> and the line drawing also. So here is the uh, line, um, line drawing ready for us to go. So the process that I will follow for doing this roses, first I will do the background and then we will start working on the, on the rose. So please uh, do let me know if you have any questions. So let me show you the colors that I want to use for the background. So today I literally clean my palette. It's not so clean most of the time. So this is ultramarine blue. I will not mix my colors on the palette. Rather, I would mix them on the on paper. So I will use French ultramarine blue. I'm mixing a large enough puddle so that I don't run out of the color on the painting. Then I will take, uh, this is, um, this color new gamboge so i will use little bit of new gamboge and i will add to it little bit of this is cadmium yellow so i will just mix it up with water. Since my flower is orange, I will use a little bit of, uh, this is uh, the color, um, let me recall what is the name of this color, the color, it is by Daniel Smith only. It's the color which they had launched a few years ago. Let me recall which color it is. And Fourth color that I want to use is perilline green. 
to get a dark green color okay. so now my mixes are ready i will keep my palette on the side And it depends on you. We can start with, uh, we can wet the paper first, or we can even uh, do the uh, dry on wet technique. So I will start with my watery yellow. here in between after three four brush strokes I will change the <coughs> color that I am using So this will help in making the background look more colorful and interesting. Here, in this place, I want to merge the background into the petal so that I don't get a cut out look. I will go here and so and let the blue mingle with them. So I have to keep an eye on my edges. And make sure that my edges they don't dry out on me. So I'm using a bigger brush, I'm using silver black velvet number 12 brush. So uh, color variation is one of the techniques in watercolors, which means that to make something look interesting, more uh, nice, we variegate the color. So here, if you will see, I am variegating the colors. I am after every few brush strokes, I am introducing different colors into my painting. Since watercolors are transparent, as we build up the layers on this one, it will start to these. Uh, bright colors will show through. Okay. 
So by using the four colors, So now let me see what has happened is I wanted to keep this edge soft, a lot of color which I don't want has flowed into the petal. So I will take a tissue and just remove the color. I want to keep it soft but at the same time I don't want so much of color to go inside. Now I can continue to work a little bit more as the background is still wet. I'm adding periline green. The thumb rule of uh, working wet on wet is never take moist uh, more moisture than it there is on the paper. Like if I introduce more moisture, I will get all these kind of backgrounds. Okay, if we keep, I take a color and brush with less moisture, I will not get backgrounds. I'm introducing a little bit of manganese blue hue into the painting. The reason why I have chosen to do a yellow flower is because many times I have seen people get confused when the you have a light color, how should we bring uh, build up the shadow of that color. Okay, so this is the uh, first layer of the background that we are doing. Let me just quickly look at the comments in our, our Facebook group. Hi, Nima. So, as I'm looking at this painting, as it is trying, I feel <clears throat> this part of the background I can still darken further. So, I will, in order to darken it further, I will take a touch of thalo blue as thalo blue is a strong color and it will help me getting it dark 
see the way i am touching the brush to the let me see i am very very delicately touching since the surface of the paper now is wet so i am very very delicately touching the surface of the paper i will also add our green the line green so very very gently enjoy the process as it is happening on the paper So in watercolors, we can make anything go dark. So whenever we have to build up a dark area, actually it is a good idea to have colorful below the in the uh, layers below. now as this part has dried i don't want to get this line so i will continue to work on this section now we can do one more technique see at some places the color has not blended with each other very nicely so i can use a generally this is a technique i learned from john solomon he uses a hake brush but i have found a large brush with dry this is a dry brush i will just just very very light the touch is very light it will just help in blending the colors with
each other. Yeah. So, I think background is looking complete to me, but I will still allow this to dry. And after it has dried, I will take a call whether I need to build one more layer of or not. Because watercolor dries lighter than what we see here okay now i may want to maybe darken this section further another is what i oh actually this is a leaf this is not part of the flower this is the leaf okay so i think i can blend this in uh, what I want is, most of the times I have seen is that when we are painting, uh, the way the photograph is taken or like if I paint like this, it will give a kind of a cutout look to the painting. So I will just add in more color here. for me to see usually I would advise you to let the background dry and then work on it so the only reason I am I'm working on this right now even after a part of it has started to dry is with little more experience I know how to handle um, the things but I would request you to build up the background in layers. Before I end, what I will do is, I will just tilt my paper Can see water is running down. I will tilt the paper and I will allow excess moisture. I will collect the excess moisture before I leave the paper to dry. 
So uh, what I will do is I will just use a tissue paper and clean the edges of my uh, tape so that as it is drying, it dries in a nice way. So I will let this dry. I have used a lot of blue in this painting. One reason is we are going to build a yellowish orangish flower. So blue is a complement color of orange. So that is why it will help in bringing out the flower. Also, I would want this particular area of the uh, flower to sort of blend into the background. So I will just soften this edge before I close in so that I want to create a kind of a lost and found edge over here so that the edge of the flower gets lost into the background in this part of the painting. Okay, so uh, feel free to drop in your comments, uh, post your paintings and uh, I will meet you next week. So please feel free to post your questions either under the comment section of this video or you can even create a post in the group. You can post your painting and I would love to critique your work. I can give suggestions on your work. So please uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, um, post your work in the group. Thank you so much. Bye.